In the shadow of ancient Rome, where the echoes of history and myth dance through the ages, stands a figure whose words have shaped the very essence of the empire. This is Virgil, a poet whose life and work continue to captivate and move heart centuries after his time. Born in 70 BCE, Publius Virgilius Maro, known to us as Virgil, emerged from the rolling fields of northern Italy. His life was one of humble beginnings, growing up in the small town of Andes near Mantua. Despite his modest start, Virgil's destiny seemed intertwined with greatness. His education took him to the bustling city of Rome, where he studied rhetoric and poetry, laying the foundation for his literary brilliance. Virgil's early works caught the attention of Rome's literary elite, but it was his magnum opus, the Aeneid, that would secure his place in history. This epic poem, which he labored over for over a decade, was not just a work of art, it was a bold statement of Rome's identity and destiny. Commissioned by Emperor Augustus, the Aeneid was more than a tale of heroism, it was a powerful piece of propaganda designed to celebrate Rome's past and justify its present glory. Virgil was not merely writing for entertainment, he was crafting a story to inspire and unite a nation. The significance of the Aeneid in Roman literature is profound. It is a masterful blend of history and myth, heroism and humanity, crafted to resonate with the values and aspirations of the Roman people. Through the character of Aeneas, Virgil wove a narrative that linked Rome's origins to the heroic age of Troy, creating a divine justification for the empire's might. Aeneas, fleeing the ashes of Troy, becomes a symbol of resilience and piety, embodying the virtues that Virgil wanted to highlight as essential to Rome's greatness. Virgil's epic was not an isolated phenomenon, but part of a grand tradition of epic storytelling that began with the ancient Greeks. The Aeneid stands in the shadow of the Iliad and the Odyssey, penned by the legendary Homer. These Greek epics set the stage for storytelling with their grand themes of heroism, divine intervention, and the quest for glory. But where Homer's tales were set in a world of Greek gods and heroes, Virgil crafted a narrative that was uniquely Roman. He drew from the well of Greek epic traditions, but infused it with Roman ideals and values. In comparing Virgil's epic with Homer's, the differences are striking. Homer's heroes, such as Achilles and Odysseus, are driven by personal glory and individual fate. Their stories are intensely personal, filled with raw emotion and personal conflict. Virgil's Aeneas, on the other hand, is a hero of duty and sacrifice. His journey is less about personal glory and more about fulfilling a preordained destiny that will lead to the founding of Rome. While Homer's epics explore the nature of heroism through personal struggle, Virgil's work emphasizes the collective journey of a people, a nation's destiny forged through trials and divine will. Virgil's portrayal of the gods and the Aeneid also reflects a shift from the Greek tradition. In Homer's epics, gods are often capricious and meddling, their interventions driven by personal whims. In Virgil's world, the gods play a more structured and purposeful role, guiding and sometimes hindering Aeneas to ensure the fulfillment of Rome's grand destiny. This change underscores the Roman values of fate and duty, presenting a more ordered universe where divine will is closely aligned with the destiny of the Roman state. The emotional depth of the Aeneid lies in its ability to blend the personal and the grandiose. Virgil captures the struggles and sacrifices of his hero with poignant clarity, allowing readers to feel Aeneas's anguish and determination as he faces the trials set before him. The epic is filled with scenes that stir the soul, Aeneas's tragic departure from Dido, the poignant encounter with his father's spirit in the underworld, and the fierce battles that echo with the cries of the fallen. Virgil's masterful storytelling ensured that the Aeneid would not merely be read but felt deeply. Through his vivid imagery and emotive language, he invites us into the heart of Aeneas's journey, making us experience his hopes, fears, and sacrifices. The epic is not just a tale of adventure, but a profound exploration of duty, destiny, and the human spirit. In the end, Virgil's legacy is etched not only in the annals of literature, but in the very soul of Roman identity. His epic transcends time and place, offering a window into the values and aspirations that shaped one of history's greatest empires. Through the Aeneid, Virgil gives us more than a story. He provides a testament to the enduring power of myth and the unbreakable thread of destiny that binds us all. 
In the epic world of the Aeneid, the gods are not distant figures watching from afar. They are deeply involved in every twist and turn of Aeneas's journey, the divine will shaping the course of his fate and, by extension, the destiny of Rome itself. From the first pages, the god's presence is a powerful force that influences every event and emotion. At the center of this divine drama are Jupiter, Juno, and Venus, three gods whose actions and rivalries drive much of the story. Jupiter, the king of the gods, holds the power to decide the fate of empires and individuals. He is the ultimate arbiter of destiny, with a voice that echoes through the heavens, making pronouncements that must be obeyed. His decisions are final and carry immense weight, but his role is more about overseeing the grand scheme of things rather than interfering directly. Juno, the queen of the gods, carries a heavy heart filled with bitterness and anger. Her resentment toward Aeneas stems from an old grudge, Troy's fall was a blow to her pride, and the rise of Rome is seen as a threat to her own favorite city of Carthage. Her hatred for Aeneas is intense, leading her to orchestrate obstacles and storms to hinder his progress. This divine fury is not just a personal vendetta, it's a reflection of the larger cosmic struggle that Aeneas must navigate. In stark contrast stands Venus, the goddess of love and Aeneas's mother. Her role is one of protection and support. Venus's love for her son is unwavering, and she uses her divine influence to shield him from harm and guide him toward his destiny. Her interventions are often subtle but critical, ensuring that Aeneas receives the help he needs to overcome the trials set before him. Through her, Virgil underscores the theme of maternal love and its power to shape fate. The divine conflict between Juno and Venus adds layers of tension and drama to Aeneas's journey. Juno's relentless opposition creates moments of intense struggle for Aeneas. She sends storms, stirs up conflict, and challenges his every step. These divine interventions are not just obstacles, but are symbolic of the larger challenges that Rome would face as it rose to power. Through these struggles, Aeneas's heroism is tested, and his character is forged. Each setback caused by Juno becomes a trial that proves his worthiness to fulfill his destiny. Venus's role, on the other hand, is a beacon of hope. Her interventions often come at critical moments when Aeneas is on the brink of despair. When his path seems impossible, Venus provides him with divine assistance, whether through guiding him to safety, giving him strength, or ensuring he receives vital information. Her support is a reminder of the power of love and the importance of divine favor in achieving great goals. The gods' influence on Aeneas's narrative is profound. Their interventions are not mere coincidences, but are crucial to the unfolding of his story. For instance, when Aeneas is shipwrecked on the shores of Carthage, it is Juno's wrath that causes the storm. Yet, it is Venus's influence that leads him to meet Dido, the queen of Carthage, setting off a tragic love affair that will have lasting consequences. These moments are not just plot devices, but are deeply emotional, reflecting the personal stakes involved in Aeneas's quest. Every time Aeneas faces a challenge or an enemy, the gods are there either as allies or adversaries. Their actions are driven by their own agendas and emotions, but they collectively contribute to the tapestry of Aeneas' journey. The divine conflict mirrors the struggles of the human world, where personal and political conflicts intertwine with fate and destiny. Virgil's portrayal of the gods gives them human traits, anger, love, jealousy, making their interventions and their impacts on Aeneas's journey all the more compelling. Through their divine meddling, Virgil crafts a narrative where every victory and defeat feels deeply intertwined with the will of the gods. Aeneas's success or failure is often a reflection of the gods' favor or displeasure, emphasizing the theme that human efforts are always part of a larger cosmic plan. The gods' actions create a rich, emotional backdrop against which Aeneas's personal struggles play out. Each divine intervention adds depth to his character and heightens the stakes of his journey. When Aeneas faces hardship, it is not just a test of his own resolve, but a reflection of the cosmic struggle between divine forces. This makes his eventual triumph not just a personal victory, but a divine endorsement of Rome's destined greatness. Through the Divine Prologue, Virgil illustrates the powerful interplay between the gods and human destiny. The gods are not distant or detached, 
they are active participants in the unfolding drama of Aeneas's life. Their presence imbues the narrative with a sense of grandeur and urgency, making every moment of Aeneas's journey resonate with emotional depth and significance. The night was silent, but for the distant cries of chaos and destruction. Troy, the great city of legends and dreams, lay in ruins. The air was thick with smoke, the walls crumbled, and the once proud towers were now broken silhouettes against the dark sky. Inside the heart of this devastation, Aeneas stood amidst the wreckage, his heart heavy with grief and resolve. The fall of Troy was not just a battle lost, it was the end of an era, the collapse of a world that had been the cradle of dreams and glory. The Greeks, long seething with anger and cunning, had finally breached the walls of this mighty fortress through a trick as cruel as it was clever, the wooden horse. Hidden within its belly were the enemy soldiers who emerged in the dead of night, opening the gates for their comrades. The city was overrun, its streets filled with the sounds of war, the clash of swords, and the cries of the vanquished. In the midst of this calamity, Aeneas, a warrior of Troy, found himself grappling with the monumental task of preserving what little hope remained. He was not just fighting for survival, he was fighting for the future. The gods had whispered of a destiny beyond the burning ruins, a promise of a new homeland where the ashes of Troy would rise anew. But how could one man, bearing the weight of a fallen city on his shoulders, escape the clutches of such overwhelming despair? The escape from Troy was as dramatic as it was harrowing. Aeneas, guided by divine prophecy and sheer willpower, gathered his family and a handful of loyal followers. The city was engulfed in flames, and every step through the ruins felt like walking through a graveyard of dreams. His wife, Creusa, and their young son, Ascanius, were his anchors, their presence a beacon of hope amid the chaos. Yet, the night was cruel, and the fate of many was sealed in those desperate moments. As they fled, the weight of their loss was unbearable. The city they loved, the lives they had known, were slipping away with every step. Aeneas's heart ached as he saw familiar places consumed by fire, heard the agonized cries of his people, and felt the crushing loss of a once great civilization. But even in the midst of such devastation, he found the strength to lead, driven by the belief in a promise he could barely see but desperately needed to fulfill. The journey from Troy to Italy was not just a physical relocation, it was a passage through grief, uncertainty, and relentless hardship. The path was fraught with perils, both seen and unseen. They faced storms and shipwrecks, hostile lands, and treacherous foes. Every challenge tested their resolve and unity. Yet, through it all, Aeneas clung to the vision of a new beginning, a land where the pain of Troy could transform into the promise of a new homeland. This journey was crucial, for it was not merely about finding a new place to live, it was about carrying forward the essence of Troy, the spirit, the hope, and the legacy. Each trial faced on the way was a testament to Aeneas's leadership and the unbreakable bond of his companions. The hardships they endured forged them into a people bound by a common purpose, a people who would lay the foundations of a new world. As they sailed across the vast and unpredictable seas, the image of Troy burning behind them was a constant shadow, a reminder of what they had lost. But it was also a driving force, a reminder of what they were fighting for. The journey was a crucible, shaping them into the people destined to carry forth the legacy of Troy and build something new and enduring. In this epic escape, Aeneas's story becomes a symbol of perseverance and hope. His struggle to preserve the essence of Troy amidst the ruins and to find a new home reflects a universal theme of loss and renewal. The journey from the fallen city to the promised land was not just a physical migration but an emotional and spiritual odyssey marking the transition from one world to another, from destruction to the dawn of a new era. With every hardship faced and every challenge overcome, the tale of Aeneas becomes a testament to the strength of the human spirit, the enduring hope for a better future and the unyielding belief that from the ashes of the old can rise something magnificent and new. Aeneas's wanderings were not merely travels, they were a series of heart-wrenching trials and encounters that would test his strength, resolve, and very humanity. Each adventure was a chapter in a story that wove together destiny, love, and loss, revealing the profound struggles of a hero bound by fate. One of the most poignant episodes of Aeneas's journey takes place in Carthage, where he meets Dido, the queen of the city. 
Carthage, with its magnificent architecture and bustling markets, seems to offer a fleeting refuge from his endless quest. Here, amidst the splendor of a city that might have felt like home, Aeneas encounters Dido, a woman whose beauty and charisma are matched only by her deep loneliness. The meeting between Aeneas and Dido is charged with both warmth and tragedy. Dido, whose heart had been shattered by the loss of her previous love, finds solace in Aeneas's presence. For a time, the two share a profound connection, their bond growing as they spend more time together. But this solace is deceptive. The gods, who are always watching and intervening, have other plans. Aeneas's destiny is not to stay in Carthage, but to continue his journey to Italy, a land promised by fate. As Aeneas grapples with his feelings for Dido, he faces an agonizing choice. The pull of his destiny conflicts with the love he feels for her. Despite his personal longing for peace and love, he must follow the path set by the gods. This internal struggle culminates in a heart-wrenching departure. The pain of leaving Dido behind is palpable, and her response, a mix of rage and heartbreak, makes the moment even more intense. Dido's tragic end, her suicide driven by despair, serves as a powerful reminder of the cost of destiny and the sacrifices Aeneas must make. The wanderings of Aeneas also take him to the underworld, a journey that is as haunting as it is enlightening. Guided by the Sybil of Cumae, a prophetic priestess who leads him through the shadowy realms, Aeneas encounters the souls of the dead, including his own father, Anchises. The descent into the underworld is not just a physical journey, but an emotional odyssey that confronts Aeneas with the weight of his destiny and the spirits of those he has lost. In the underworld, Aeneas is shown the future of Rome, the glorious empire that his efforts are destined to build. This vision is both awe-inspiring and heavy with responsibility. He sees the future heroes of Rome, the great figures who will rise from the ashes of Troy and shape the world. This glimpse into the future is a powerful affirmation of his mission, a reminder that his sacrifices are part of a larger, grander design. The encounter with his father, who provides guidance and encouragement, further strengthens Aeneas's resolve, reaffirming his commitment to his fated path. Throughout these trials, the theme of fate and prophecy is ever-present. The gods have set Aeneas on a path that he cannot deviate from, and their prophecies guide his actions and shape his experiences. Every challenge he faces, from the burning love of Dido to the eerie visions of the underworld, is a testament to the power of fate and the weight of destiny. Aeneas's journey is a series of trials designed to test his character, his devotion to his mission, and his ability to endure. The relationships Aeneas forms during his travels, particularly with Dido and the Sibyl, are crucial to his emotional journey. They are not merely encounters, but deep connections that influence his actions and decisions. Dido's love and subsequent loss embody the personal sacrifices Aeneas makes for the sake of his destiny. Her tragic fate is a poignant reminder of the personal cost of following one's path. The Sibyl, on the other hand, represents the guidance of prophecy and the role of divine intervention in Aeneas's journey. Her role is to navigate Aeneas through the trials of the underworld and reveal the destiny that awaits him. Her presence highlights the blend of human effort and divine will in shaping the course of events. She helps Aeneas confront his fears and understand the larger significance of his quest. Aeneas's wanderings, filled with profound encounters and trials, paint a vivid picture of the hero's journey marked by love, loss, and the relentless pursuit of destiny. Each trial serves as a crucible, forging Aeneas into the leader and hero he is destined to become. His path is a testament to the strength of the human spirit in the face of overwhelming challenges, and the emotional depth of his experiences underscores the profound nature of his quest. Descending into the underworld is a journey of both literal and emotional depth. For Aeneas, this descent is not just a passage through the shadowy realms beneath the earth, but a soul-stirring encounter with the weight of destiny and the echoes of the past. Guided by the Sybil of Cumae, he steps into a world where shadows hold both sorrow and revelation. The underworld is a realm of haunting beauty and overwhelming grief. As Aeneas crosses its threshold, the air grows colder, and the silence is punctuated only by the whispers of lost souls. The dark, foreboding landscape stretches out before him, a place where the living and the dead exist in a fragile, uneasy balance. 
The path is fraught with the spirits of those who have passed, their mournful cries and empty eyes reflecting the weight of countless unfulfilled dreams. As Aeneas progresses, he encounters a parade of these souls, each one carrying a story of its own. These encounters are deeply emotional, filled with the agony of unfulfilled lives and the poignant realization of the lives Aeneas left behind. He meets warriors who fell in battle, their faces a tapestry of heroism and despair. He sees mothers mourning their lost children, their grief echoing through the shadowy realm. Each encounter is a reminder of the cost of his quest, a visceral illustration of the personal sacrifices made in the pursuit of a greater destiny. The most profound moment comes when Aeneas meets his father, Anchises. The reunion is heart-wrenching, a moment of raw emotion as Aeneas sees the familiar face of the man he lost, now residing in the depths of the underworld. Anchises' presence is both a comfort and a burden. The father's guidance and words of wisdom are laced with the heavy realization of the destiny that awaits his son. As they converse, Anchises reveals to Aeneas the grand vision of Rome's future, a breathtaking and monumental prophecy that underscores the importance of his quest. This vision of Rome's future is more than just a glimpse into a distant era, it is a powerful affirmation of the worthiness of Aeneas's struggle. The future that Anchises reveals is one of glory and greatness, where Rome stands as a beacon of power, civilization, and unity. Aeneas sees the heroes of Rome, the great leaders and warriors who will shape the world. The sight of this glorious future, with its triumphs and achievements, is both exhilarating and overwhelming. It confirms the significance of Aeneas's journey and the sacrifices made along the way. The implications of this prophetic vision are profound. Aeneas understands that his personal pain and the loss of his comrades are not in vain. The future greatness of Rome is a testament to the importance of his mission, a validation of the trials he has faced. The vision inspires him to push forward with renewed determination, knowing that the hardships endured are part of a larger, noble purpose. The descent into the underworld, with its encounters and revelations, is a turning point for Aeneas. It is a journey through darkness that leads to the light of understanding. The experience is both a test of his resolve and a source of profound emotional depth. The souls he meets, the words of his father, and the vision of Rome's future all contribute to a deeper understanding of his role in the grand tapestry of fate. This journey through the underworld is more than a passage through a mythical realm. It is a transformative experience that shapes Aeneas' character and fortifies his resolve. The weight of the future he witnesses is a heavy burden, but it is also a source of strength. The emotional depth of his encounters and the clarity of his vision drive him forward, reinforcing the idea that every sacrifice and struggle is a step toward a greater, more glorious destiny. The sight of the Italian shore was both a beacon of hope and a new battleground for Aeneas and his weary companions. After a harrowing odyssey across storm-tossed seas and treacherous lands, they finally arrived in a land that was promised to them, a place that held the promise of a new beginning but also the seeds of conflict. The arrival in Italy was not marked by celebration, but by a cautious optimism. As Aeneas and his people disembarked, the weight of their long journey and the burning ruins of their past still heavy on their shoulders, they faced an unknown world. The land was lush and inviting, yet it was inhabited by tribes and leaders who viewed these newcomers with suspicion and wariness. The initial interactions with the local tribes were tense. The Italians, wary of these foreign invaders, saw Aeneas and his companions as a threat to their own way of life. The atmosphere was fraught with uncertainty as Aeneas, guided by his strong sense of purpose and diplomacy, sought to build relationships and secure a foothold in this new land. These early meetings were marked by a delicate dance of respect and negotiation, as Aeneas attempted to communicate his peaceful intentions while navigating the complex dynamics of local politics. Among the leaders he encountered was King Latinus, whose initial response to Aeneas was one of cautious curiosity. Latinus, aware of a prophecy that spoke of a foreigner bringing great change to his land, was intrigued by Aeneas' arrival but also apprehensive about the implications. The king's daughter, Lavinia, played a central role in these interactions. Her presence was a symbol of potential alliances and the hope for unity, but it also became a point of contention as her marriage became a focal point in the brewing conflict. 
As Aeneas and Latinus engaged in discussions, it became clear that their goals were not entirely aligned. While Aeneas sought to establish a new home for his people and fulfill his destiny, Latinus had his own concerns about the future of his kingdom. The arrival of these new settlers threatened to upset the existing balance of power and provoke the ire of rival tribes. The delicate peace that Aeneas hoped to build was overshadowed by the rising tension and the complex web of alliances and rivalries. The brewing conflict became increasingly evident as rival leaders and tribes began to take notice of Aeneas's presence. One of the most formidable opponents was Turnus, the leader of the Rutulians. Turnus, already vying for power and influence, viewed Aeneas as a direct challenge to his own ambitions. His resentment and rivalry quickly escalated into open hostility, setting the stage for a confrontation that would test Aeneas's resolve and leadership. The tensions between Aeneas and Turnus were not merely political, they were deeply personal. Turnus's anger was fueled by a sense of betrayal and a desire to protect his own people and honor. The conflict was not just about land or power, but about pride and legacy. The escalating hostilities threatened to plunge the region into a full-blown war, with Aeneas and his people caught in the middle of this struggle. Aeneas's attempts to forge alliances and seek peaceful resolutions were met with mixed results. While some tribes were open to negotiation and collaboration, others were firmly aligned with Turnus or driven by their own ambitions. The landscape of Italy was marked by a series of shifting alliances and betrayals as leaders and tribes maneuvered to secure their own interests in the face of the growing threat posed by Aeneas's presence. In the midst of these challenges, Aeneas remained focused on his mission. The hope of establishing a new homeland for his people was a guiding light amidst the conflict and uncertainty. His leadership and determination were tested as he navigated the complex political landscape, balancing the need for alliances with the ever-present threat of conflict. The arrival in Italy marked a turning point in Aeneas' journey, shifting from a quest for a new home to a battle for survival and dominance. The interactions with local tribes and leaders, the formation of alliances, and the brewing conflicts were all part of a larger struggle that would shape the future of both Aeneas' people and the land they sought to claim. Each step in this new land was fraught with tension and potential conflict, but also with the hope of building something lasting and significant. The stakes were high, and the challenges were great, but Aeneas's resolve remained unwavering as he faced the trials of establishing a new beginning in a land that was both promising and perilous. The clash of destiny and fate reached its peak as Aeneas and Turnus faced off in a fierce and defining struggle. This was not just a battle between two men, but a monumental war that would determine the future of a nation and seal the legacy of Rome. The war began with a thunderous roar that shook the land. Aeneas, a warrior driven by the weight of his ancestors' dreams and the promise of a new homeland, faced Turnus, whose rage and determination burned with the fire of a man defending his people and his pride. The battlefield was set against a backdrop of chaos, where the air crackled with tension and the ground trembled with the impact of clashing armies. The initial skirmishes were intense. Each side fought with a ferocity born from their beliefs and their visions of the future. Aeneas led his troops with unwavering resolve, his leadership shining through the turmoil. His men, weary but fierce, rallied behind him, their spirits lifted by his bravery and the hope of securing a new beginning. The Rutulians, led by Turnus, were equally determined, their cries of defiance echoing through the valley. Key battles were etched into the fabric of this struggle, each one a testament to the courage and sacrifice of those involved. The battlefield became a theater of heroism and valor, where the clash of steel and the cries of warriors painted a vivid picture of the struggle for supremacy. Aeneas, wielding his sword with a skill and precision that inspired his troops, performed deeds of great bravery. His leadership and combat prowess became legendary as he fought not just for victory, but for the future he envisioned for his people. Turnus, too, was a formidable opponent. His strength and skill were matched by his unwavering commitment to his cause. In one memorable duel, Turnus and Aeneas clashed in a confrontation that symbolized the heart of the conflict. The two leaders, each representing different visions for the future, fought with a fierce intensity that left the outcome hanging in the balance. The duel was a dramatic and poignant moment, 
embodying the personal and collective stakes of the war. The significance of this conflict extended beyond the immediate struggle. It was a battle that would shape the very foundation of Rome. The outcome of this war was not just a matter of who would claim victory, but of who would lay the groundwork for a new civilization. The clash between Aeneas and Turnus was a struggle for the heart and soul of a nation yet to be born. Each blow struck, each strategy employed, was a step toward the creation of something enduring and monumental. In the final stages of the conflict, the battle reached its climax. The confrontation between Aeneas and Turnus became a symbolic struggle for the future of Rome. With a decisive and heart-wrenching move, Aeneas emerged victorious. The triumph was bittersweet, as it came at the cost of great personal and collective sacrifice. The battle's resolution marked the end of a turbulent chapter and the beginning of a new era for Aeneas's people. The aftermath of the war was a moment of reflection and transition. The bloodshed and strife gave way to the hope of rebuilding and forging a new destiny. The legacy of the conflict lived on in the foundation of Rome, a city that would rise from the ashes of battle and become a symbol of strength, unity, and enduring greatness. The war between Aeneas and Turnus was more than a series of battles, it was a profound and emotional struggle that defined the course of history. It was a fight for survival, identity, and the realization of a dream that had driven Aeneas and his people through countless hardships. The conflict's resolution set the stage for the creation of Rome, a city born from the trials of its founders and destined to shape the world for generations to come. The final duel between Aeneas and Turnus was a moment steeped in tension and destiny. As the two leaders faced each other on the battlefield, the air was thick with the weight of their struggle. The once vibrant and fierce competition had reached its dramatic climax. It was a confrontation charged with all the hopes, fears, and aspirations that had driven both men throughout the war. Aeneas, his armor battered and his face marked by the strain of battle, stood resolute. His heart was heavy with the burden of his mission, to secure a new homeland for his people. Across from him, Turnus, equally battle-worn, exuded defiance and pride. The anger and desperation in Turnus's eyes spoke of a man fighting for everything he held dear. The two warriors circled each other, their movements sharp and deliberate, each strike and parry a testament to their skill and determination. The clash between them was more than a physical struggle. It was a symbolic battle for the future of a new world. Each blow exchanged carried the weight of their conflicting visions, each parry a defense of their respective legacies. Aeneas fought not just for victory, but for the dream of a new Rome that had guided him through countless trials. Turnus fought with equal fervor, driven by the desire to protect his people and honor. As the duel reached its peak, it became clear that the struggle was nearing its end. With a powerful and heart-wrenching final strike, Aeneas delivered a blow that turned the tide of the battle. Turnus fell to the ground, the spark of life fading from his eyes. The scene was both tragic and poignant, two great leaders, once bound by fate and enmity, now facing the finality of their conflict. The silence that followed was a stark reminder of the high cost of their struggle. The death of Turnus marked the end of a fierce and bloody conflict. His fall was a moment of profound sorrow, not just for him, but for all who had been swept up in the tide of the war. The consequences of his death were far-reaching. For Aeneas, it meant the fulfillment of his mission and the securing of a future for his people. But it also meant the end of a life filled with passion and resistance, a life that had been marked by its own struggles and sacrifices. With Turnus's death, the immediate conflict came to a resolution. The peace that followed was hard won and fragile. The once hostile tribes and leaders faced a new reality, one shaped by the outcome of the war and the vision that Aeneas had fought so fiercely to achieve. The resolution of the conflict was a moment of transition, where the hopes of the future began to take shape amid the echoes of the past. The establishment of peace was a delicate and emotional process. It required not just the end of hostilities, but the beginning of reconciliation and rebuilding. The people of Italy, who had been caught in the crossfire of the war, faced the daunting task of forging a new unity from the remnants of conflict. Aeneas, though victorious, knew that true peace required more than just the cessation of fighting, it required the healing of wounds and the forging of new bonds. 
In the aftermath of the final duel, there was a sense of both relief and reflection. The death of Turnus had brought an end to the immediate conflict, but it also marked the beginning of a new chapter. The future of Rome, once a distant dream, now lay within reach. The legacy of the war was etched into the foundation of a new civilization, one that would carry forward the hopes and dreams of those who had fought and sacrificed for it. The final moments of the duel and the death of Turnus were not just the conclusion of a battle, they were a poignant reminder of the cost of ambition, honor, and destiny. The resolution of the conflict was a moment of profound significance, marking the transition from war to peace and the beginning of a new era for Aeneas and his people. In the heart of Virgil's epic, the Aeneid, lie profound themes and symbols that speak to the very soul of Roman identity and aspiration. As Aeneas navigates his epic journey, his story becomes a canvas illustrating the enduring values and ideals of Rome. The theme of fate runs like a powerful river through the narrative. From the ashes of Troy to the shores of Italy, Aeneas is guided by an almost divine sense of destiny. Fate in the Aeneid isn't a mere whim of the gods, but a force that shapes the entire course of history. It's a burden and a blessing, pushing Aeneas to fulfill his role as the father of Rome. This relentless drive of fate becomes a powerful undercurrent, showing that Aeneas' struggles are not just personal, but are pivotal to the unfolding of a grand historical destiny. Duty is another central theme that pulses through every chapter. For Aeneas, duty isn't just about personal honor, it's a sacred obligation to his people and to the gods. His journey is marked by the constant tension between his personal desires and his responsibilities. This theme is embodied in Aeneas's heartbreaking decision to leave Dido, the queen of Carthage, for the sake of his mission. Duty becomes the crucible in which his character is tested and refined, highlighting the sacrifice and perseverance needed to build something enduring and great. Piety, or reverence to the gods and the divine will, is portrayed as a cornerstone of Aeneas's character. His actions are driven by a profound respect for the gods and their will. This piety isn't just a personal trait, it's a guiding principle that aligns with the broader values of Roman society. Through Aeneas's devotion, Virgil illustrates the Roman belief that success and prosperity come from honoring the gods and following the path laid out by divine forces. Symbolism in the Aeneid enriches the narrative, turning objects and events into profound messages. One of the most vivid symbols is the Trojan fire. The burning of Troy represents the destruction of the old order, but it also symbolizes the painful yet necessary transition from the past to the future. The fire that consumes Troy is a powerful image of both loss and transformation, reflecting the trials and tribulations that Aeneas must endure to achieve his destiny. The shield of Aeneas, another significant symbol, offers a glimpse into the epic's deeper layers. Forged by the god Vulcan, the shield depicts future scenes of Roman glory, from battles to triumphs, capturing the very essence of Rome's future greatness. This symbol connects Aeneas' personal struggles with the larger narrative of Roman history, showing that his journey is not just about founding a city, but about setting the stage for the rise of an empire. Through these symbols and themes, Virgil paints a rich portrait of Roman values. The epic doesn't merely recount heroic deeds, it reflects the ideals that defined Roman society. Aeneas's journey embodies the Roman virtues of bravery, duty, and reverence for the gods, presenting them as timeless qualities essential for the creation and sustenance of greatness. In the tapestry of the Aeneid, themes like fate, duty, and piety are interwoven with powerful symbols that speak to the heart of Roman values. Aeneas's journey becomes a reflection of the ideals that would come to define an empire, showing how personal sacrifice and divine will shape the course of history. Each theme and symbol is a thread in the grand narrative, making the Aeneid not just a story of an epic journey, but a powerful testament to the values that built Rome. The echoes of the Aeneid reach far beyond the ancient world, shaping the very fabric of Roman culture and literature. Its legacy is a testament to how one epic can mold an entire civilization's identity and inspire countless generations. From the moment Virgil's verses began circulating through Rome, the Aeneid became more than just a story. It became a cornerstone of Roman culture. For Romans, Aeneas wasn't merely a hero, he was the embodiment of their values and aspirations. 
the epic crafted a narrative that tied their origins to the divine, giving them a sense of purpose and destiny. Through Aeneas's trials and triumphs, Romans saw reflections of their own struggles and successes, reinforcing their cultural pride and historical continuity. Schools and scholars revered Virgil's work, and his verses became a staple of education, shaping the minds of the Roman elite. The influence of the Aeneid extended far beyond the boundaries of Rome. As the Roman Empire spread its wings across Europe, so did Virgil's epic. The story of Aeneas became a model for heroism and virtue in the Western literary tradition. Medieval writers and poets drew inspiration from the epic, weaving its themes of fate, duty, and piety into their own works. The grandeur of Rome, as portrayed in Virgil's verses, became a symbol of cultural and moral excellence, influencing the way people across Europe viewed their own histories and destinies. The echoes of the Aeneid resonated through the Renaissance, a period that revived interest in classical literature. Artists and writers, captivated by Virgil's depiction of heroism and divine intervention, began to reinterpret the epic in their own ways. The Renaissance painter Sandro Botticelli, for instance, depicted scenes from the Aeneid in his works, infusing them with the vibrancy and emotion of his time. Writers such as Dante and Shakespeare, too, were influenced by Virgil's epic. Dante's Divine Comedy pays homage to Virgil by making him a guide through the afterlife, illustrating how deeply Virgil's vision had penetrated the Western imagination. In modern times, the Aeneid continues to be a wellspring of inspiration and adaptation. Its themes of struggle, destiny, and triumph resonate with contemporary audiences who find new ways to relate to Aeneas's journey. Films, novels, and even video games have drawn upon the epic's rich tapestry to create stories that echo its grandeur. Adaptations bring Aeneas's story into new contexts, demonstrating how timeless themes of heroism and sacrifice remain relevant. In literature and media today, the Aeneid serves as a benchmark for epic storytelling. It offers a model of how to weave together personal trials with grand historical narratives, a technique that has influenced countless authors across genres. Modern interpretations often focus on the emotional depth of Aeneas' journey, highlighting his internal conflicts and the personal sacrifices he makes for the greater good. The legacy of the Aeneid is a powerful reminder of how stories shape our understanding of ourselves and our place in the world. Its impact on Roman culture and literature was profound, influencing the way Romans saw their own history and identity. Through the centuries, it has inspired writers, artists, and thinkers, proving that the epic's themes of fate, duty, and piety continue to resonate deeply with people across cultures and eras. The story of Aeneas, with its blend of heroism, divine intervention, and the pursuit of destiny, remains a poignant and influential tale that touches hearts and minds, echoing through the ages.